Hey everybody, welcome. We have a heck of a video for you guys. Here's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be doing a positive externality with a per unit subsidy. That's right, we're gonna intervene with a per unit subsidy and we're gonna do a welfare analysis, okay? So this is the real deal because you are really gonna be tested on how well you understand this graph, the concept of welfare analysis. If you can do this, this is one of the most sophisticated microeconomics welfare analysis that we do in a principles or foundation class. So if you can do this, you can pretty much do any graph in your microeconomics class, okay? So let's get to it, all right? Let's first just take a look at the graph. You can see right off the bat, we have a positive externality from consumption, okay? What tells us that is that MSB curve is above, and I like to keep that vertical orientation when I talk about the MSB's relation to the MB, MPB's curve, okay? It lies above. Now, what does that mean? It means for every one of these units of output, there's not just a private benefit to the consumer, okay? There is also an external benefit going to society that the consumer is not internalizing. That's right, we've got a positive externality. So this distance between the MPB line and the MSB line, that is the per unit positive externality, okay? And we've got that the whole way. So there's your per unit positive externality. We're saying no externalities from the production of the good, okay? So supply always equals MPC because the supplier is making decisions based on their private costs, the costs they're internalizing. But we're saying, hey, that social cost that includes everything, that total cost of producing the good, okay, that's equal to the marginal private cost. So again, this says no externality at all. Now, what do we see when we have positive externalities? We see the market left alone, i.e. the supplier and the demander. If we leave them alone, we're gonna get an intersection right there, right? That supply and demand intersecting right there. They're making decisions based on their private benefit and private cost, and that's gonna get us quantity market right there. But the optimal quantity to be produced always, guys, we go with the S curves, right? Marginal social cost, marginal social benefit. Go to where they intersect, right? The optimal amount of goods we want produced is where those two goods intersect. Bring that line down, Q opt. We are not allocatively efficient, i.e. we are allocatively inefficient. We're not allocating the right amount of resources to production of this good. We actually need to allocate more resources to production of this good to be at our optimum level, okay? So again, QM, QOPT. By the way, what might we be talking about here? What is this positive externality that might be existing? Well, my two go-tos for positive externalities are education and healthcare, okay? When somebody gets educated, certainly they get a private benefit, but there's also benefits to others by that person being educated. So there's some external benefit also that's not being internalized by the person who's actually being educated. Okay. And so that MSB is above. Same with healthcare, same idea with healthcare. Okay. So there we go. We've got QM, QOPT. We've got an under allocation of resources if we leave the market alone. Now I do want to mark just one other thing really quickly. I'm gonna to have to do more with this graph in a second, but I just wanna get that price market, go ahead and get that marked off, okay? Now, next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna intervene. We're gonna intervene with a subsidy, okay? I like to bring that subsidy in from the right, and the reason I say the subsidy wedge comes in from the right is it's gonna increase the quantity that we both produce and consume, okay? So by bringing it into the right, it's gonna push our output that way. That's kind of a mechanical thing, but here's what I'm saying, guys, is there is a subsidy wedge out there. That's what we're gonna say it looks like right there. What is that wedge doing? It's splitting the P, P from the PC, something to kind of note right off the bat is when we give the market participants a subsidy, price producer goes up, producer's happy about that because price is a benefit to them, price consumer goes down, consumer happy about that because price is a cost to them, okay? So when we hand them money, the market participants, both of them are gonna probably benefit because generally we don't have perfectly inelastic or perfectly elastic supplier demand curves, so the benefit is gonna be shared, and just by the way, it's gonna be shared almost equally because I've drawn this graph so that the elasticities of both PES and PED or supply and demand are about the same. So they're both gonna share in this benefit about the same amount, okay? So there's my subsidy wedge and I'm gonna bring that in, okay? And something I like to always say about the subsidy wedge is, hey, that is MPC always, okay? Because we're focused on the market participants when we bring that wedge in and MPB, okay? Remember, the market participants are making decisions based on their private costs and private 
benefit, right? So we're gonna bring that in. And just one last thing, this distance right there, right? From the tip of it to the base, that's the amount output is gonna be increased. That goes back to my reference about bringing it in from the right, and that's why it's increasing that output, okay? So again, look for my MPC and MPB when I put it in. I'm gonna ignore this MSB altogether when I bring that in because this is a market-based intervention. It's focused on the market participants, and the market participants, again, making decisions on their P curves. So I bring that in, don't even look at this red line, and it's gonna end up right here. Now, of course, there's something really important I need to say right here, and that is that we have come in with the perfect subsidy. Almost impossible to do in reality, but just to get the concept, we often do it in the classroom where we say, hey, let's get a per unit subsidy. Again, this is the amount of the per unit subsidy right there, that base of the subsidy with exactly equal to the per unit externality. And you can see that right there. So it's gonna fit in just right there. And it's gonna put our Q sub right where Q op is, okay? The quantity supplied and quantity demanded are gonna increase by the exact same amount. Welfare table. Groups, we're gonna have a ton of groups, okay? Almost like the maximum amount of groups we ever do for a welfare uh, analysis in a micro class. We're gonna, of course, oops, let me actually change over. I wanna do this in red to, we're gonna have our consumer, we're gonna have our producer, so there's our market participants, we pretty much always have them. We're gonna have the government in there because there's a government outlay. And now because we have an externality, I also need the third parties, okay? Now, of course, it's really important what you see right here is I've got my double line, and that means that, hey, down here is gonna be a sum of everything above, and this is our society. This is everything, okay? Never get confused that third party is society. Society is everybody, okay? So there are our groups, and we've got our society at the bottom. Now, what we need to do is put in our policy one, okay? Sometimes I call it the status quo, but policy one, oftentimes I'll call it that. So our policy one is we're gonna say is no intervention. Remember, we've got a market failure, a positive externality, no intervention, no subsidy. Policy two, that's gonna be our per unit subsidy. So per, oops, forgot my little hyphen there. So per unit subsidy. And then our third one right here, I don't know if maybe you want to call it the fourth column. This last column right here always, always is our delta. It's a comparison between these two, okay? And I like to say this is our most important column at the end of the day. Now I got to divide this thing up and I could have done it before I even started the video, but I kind of wanted you to see me do it, okay? So I'm going to bring this straight across and I'm going to bring this straight across. And then I know I need to do one other thing. And that QM, I need to kind of go all the way up my graph, okay? Now I've got everything I need to do this analysis except for the letters. So let's go ahead and put those in. Let's call that A, B. Of course, you can put your any letters in any area you want to, but you know, just generally going with the alphabet here. A, B, C, D, E, F. All right, uh, yeah, I think I can just keep that just the way it is. G, H, I, J, K. Okay, I think those are the divisions that I'm gonna need to be able to do this. All right, so let's get to it, okay? And we're gonna go kind of fast because we don't want this video to be any longer than it needs to be. So let's get to it. Consumer, no intervention. Hey, we're just going with price market right here to the intersection of supply and demand. There it is, there's the MPB. So it's A and D, right? So plus A plus D. The producer, going back to the price, here's the MPC curve right there. So it's plus H and K, plus H plus K. The government, they're not subsidizing anything, right? No intervention. So just put a couple of dashes, meaning, hey, they're not involved. Third parties, they are being helped by the production and consumption. This is a positive externality. So what are we gonna go with? This is where it gets a little confusing to some people. All right, the best area, there's a few different ways we can actually identify it, but the best area to make this a clean welfare analysis is to go right there where we see that externality, okay? Now, I'm not gonna go past QM, okay? So they're getting, and imagine that red line kept on extending all the way up, but they're getting all of this right to this part right there. I hope you can see that. So basically plus B plus 
E. And again, that might be one of the toughest things for kids to see. But again, for every unit that's produced up to QM, we don't want anything to the right of QM. No, we're not taking C. We're not taking F right now. Don't want anything to the right of QM. But every good that's produced up to QM, they're getting that vertical distance between the MPB and the MSB curve. That's going to be B and E. Okay, that's something you got to have. Now for this one, we're just going to say kind of this little sigma above, like sum above. We, we could fill that in, but it's just not really necessary, okay? So we just kind of say, hey, that's everything above. Moving to the next one, P2 per unit uh, subsidy. There's a couple things I want to do here is these little dashed marks now. I want to go ahead and label what they are, okay? Price producer. Remember, that price producer is going up. Again, the producer is very happy about that because price is a benefit to them, right? Price consumers going down. Consumers also happy about that because price is a cost to them. So we got that split. That distance is our per unit subsidy, right? That amount right there, which is just, you know, it is the per unit subsidy, as I just said. So we've got those labeled up right there. Let's go do it. And again, this is going to get a little confusing for some people, okay? But consumer, what do I go off of? I mean, it's basically their marginal private benefit, right? So I need to take into account this curve. And what's their new price? It's PC. That's it. That's all I got to look at is, hey, my PC... And there's my MPB, okay? And the distance in between your price and your marginal private benefit, because price is a per unit cost to the consumer. This is my marginal private benefit. I've got this vertical orientation. All of this is surplus, okay? So that's a lot to write. We still got the A and D plus A plus D, just like we had. Now we're gaining H, I, and J, because that's PC down there, right? Plus H, plus I, plus J. Again, pretty difficult stuff all right for students to do but there's my price and i'm just using my model to calculate that consumer surplus producer surplus okay now i'm going to be focusing on this mpc line mpc line and my price right there's my price price is a benefit to the supplier the curve itself is a cost curve there's my cost curve difference between benefits and cost is the surplus right so d e f h k so i'm still getting that h and k but now i'm also getting d and e and f and h and k all right that's a lot they're getting um their benefit is now right there the government now this is an outlay for them they're having to actually expend money right so these are all going to be negatives how much are they um giving to the market participants well that's my per unit subsidy and i've got to take it all the way to q sub i know you probably can barely see it but it's q sub right there so i'm just going to take that all the way all the way to right there that's where my q sub is so i need that entire rectangle so minus d minus e minus f minus h minus i minus j minus g that was this entire rectangle that's the government outlay they're spending that money third parties hey they're going to gain even more than they used to okay they had b and e but now we're producing these additional good units because of that per unit subsidy i drew those two lines right there we're producing these additional units and so guess what there we go. We got to bring it on down. We got to include the B and E, but also grab C, F, and G. So plus B, plus E, plus C, plus F, plus G, sigma above. We've done all the hard work. Now we just got to like take a look at our table and fill it out, right? Do the delta column. Consumers, we gave a subsidy. They're going to gain, right? Now, what are they gaining? H, I, and J. So let's put in plus H, plus I, plus J. Again, most important column. You wanna say, what is the impact on the consumer? That's it, they're gaining that from the subsidy. The producer, hey, well, once again, we're giving money to those market participants. Producer's gonna to gain too. So they're gaining D, E, and F, right? So plus D, plus E, plus F. Market participants totally gaining here. Government, hey, it's their money. So this is an outlay. It's not a gain for them, it's a negative for them. It's taking this all over. So minus D, minus E, minus F, minus H, minus I, minus J, minus G. It's just pulling all that over right there. Third parties, they're gonna gain, right? Every time this thing is consumed is what we're saying, they're gaining, more is being consumed, right? By quantity supplied and quantity demanded, increased by the same amount. 
they're going to gain, they're going to gain C, F, and G. Again, per unit externality all the way going from here to there, it's this little parallelogram right there, right? And we can just see it right here in our analysis, right? Plus C plus F plus G. Now, very important. That's the big deal, okay? Like, I don't want you to really X this stuff out if you're doing this on a test or anything because you want to show this stuff. How is it impacting in each group is super important. But this is also super important. How is society overall impacted? And just so me and you can kind of see it and not lose track of anything, I'm going to cross some things out. Again, generally, I would say don't cross things out if you're trying to make this nice and pretty for a, a class out there, okay? But here I go. I'm going to say, look, I got a minus D and a plus D, a minus E, a plus E, a plus F, a minus F, okay? A minus J, a plus J, a minus I, a plus I, a minus H, a plus H, okay? And what else do I've got? I've got a plus G and a minus G. What do we have left here? Take a look. C and F are still pluses, okay? With no minuses to, my, to knock out, plus C, plus F. That's right, this government intervention helped us out, okay? It gave us more social surplus. Remember, the positive externality was a market failure. Was a market failure. It's when the market left alone fails to achieve max social surplus. There was dead weight loss if we didn't intervene. We came in with the perfect intervention with a per unit subsidy equal to the per unit positive externality. And so we got C and F back, right? We got rid of that dead weight loss that would have existed without intervention, and now we've got it. We've increased social surplus. Just to kind of bring this point home, guys, when I talk about finding dead weight loss, here's what I always do. I say pay attention to the S curves. So right now, just focus on the two S curves, right? They're intersecting right here. The market left alone would have produced this output, right? So we just draw that right straight up and you can see this triangle, and why is that triangle so important, okay? It's because, hey, this was my M, maybe I should write this in red just to keep color consistent. So let me change for just a second. MSB, right? There's my MSB, my MSC. We would have stopped producing here and not produced those goods for which the MSB, kind of the worst maybe B you've ever seen written, but anyhow, these units for which my MSB exceeded my MSC, we want to produce those units. That subsidy is going to get us to produce that, th those units, and we are going to get an increase in social surplus. And if you stuck with that video all the way through and you were leaning forward at your desk and watching that and you've got it, you've got it. I mean, I think you can do just about any graph in microeconomics, any welfare analysis out there. Thanks for, <laughs> for hanging with us. We'll see you in the next video.